Copyright, University of South Australia. This recording may contain third-party copyright material. Apart from any use permitted under the Copyright Act 1968, no part of this recording may be reproduced or rebroadcast by any means or process without the prior written permission of the University of South Australia and the copyright owners. So the next bit we're going to talk about is how things get into the arm, just quickly. So what you can see here is what we've drawn is we've drawn the sternum. We've drawn the clavicle. We've drawn the scapula into the back. We've drawn the ribs here and the humerus out to the side. So what you need to imagine is that there's actually a gap in through here. If we have a look at where that gap genuinely exists, then we can see here, just like in the picture, that we would have the sternum with its body here and its manubrium here, the clavicle passing out this way, the scapula to the back and the ribs coming around. Can you see how, how I can put my hand here between the ribs and the clavicle? This area here is very similar to what we've discussed in the past in our femoral triangle. Because in, structures will come out of here, like arteries, things will come out of here, like the nerves, and in order to get in the arm, they'll pass through this space, we now call the axilla. So the term axilla is to describe your armpit. So your armpit, or your axillary fossa, is pretty much exactly the same in a way as your femoral triangle. So we call your axilla. What I want you to do is put your hand on your hip and your elbow out to the side, push in against your hip, and then put your hand, other hand into your armpit. Do you feel that it's a really big fossa? Like you could almost hide something in there if you had to. So this is your axilla or your axillary fossa. Do you feel that there's a big muscle covering from the front? Do you feel that there's a muscle to the back, creating an anterior wall and a posterior wall to your axilla? Do you feel your arm laterally and your rib cage medially? So effectively, this forms a bit of a TP or triangle or pyramid type shape, whereby we have the arm out on the lateral side, then we have the anterior wall as the muscle, then you would have the posterior wall as the muscle, the medial wall as the rib cage. Then you can see here the clavicle coming this way. The scapula would be behind, and then the first rib here making that upper border. So you can see that it's a bit of an odd shape, all right? But this space, as structures pass through here, this is what we call our axilla. So what we'll be going through here is nerves, arteries, and veins. Now there's no secret that the nerves, arteries, and veins are going to have to have something to do with this space. So if we consider the femoral triangle like we have weeks ago, we said that it would be the femoral artery, the femoral vein, and the femoral nerve. So if this space is called our axilla, we're going to expect that we're going to have the axillary artery. We can also then expect that we're going to have the axillary vein. But the nerves is a new bunch of nerves that we'll be talking about in more detail later. We call it the brachial plexus. So something that is brachial, the word brachial is of upper arm. So the brachial plexus is the group of nerves which are going to be in and controlling the arm. If we just do something really quickly, let's show you how something like the axillary artery comes to being in its position. So we have our heart, which would be sitting in slightly more to the left side. And coming out of the top of the heart, we have the aorta. So coming out, we know we've got the ascending part of the aorta. Here we have it arching over the top. And then we would need to have arteries coming out the top of the aorta. 
in order for them to be going to your head and your arms. The aorta then would pass over and behind the heart and travel down and become something we know as the abdominal aorta that we've discussed before. So this artery here would go towards your head. This one goes out towards your left arm. And on this side, we have a main branch which comes up. One goes off to your head like this. The other comes out goes into your right arm, behind the clavicle, in front of the scapula, down into the arm, past your elbow, and all the way to your hands. So as an example here, this area, we call this bit the axillary artery. So inside the axilla, we will find the axillary artery. In the same position, we will find the axillary vein. But the nerves, they're slightly different. Instead of coming from our lumbar vertebrae and our sacral region, like our lumbar and sacral vertebrae uh, nerves for the leg, they come out of the neck. So these are our cervical nerves. So they come out here, do, and there are lots of them. And I'm not going to learn them now in this prac, but in coming weeks we will learn these. So we have five major nerves which we'll be learning about in coming weeks. And they are called the musculocutaneous nerve, axillary nerve, radial nerve. Ah, that one I think would go through the radial groove. The median nerve and the ulna nerve. So just for the time being, you can remember Mamu. And these are the nerves of the brachial plexus, which will be going through our axilla. This is how you would get innovation to all of the muscles in your arm, in your forearm, and right down to the innovation of your fingertips. So if we go and we have a look at this one, let's put those arteries in a little bit bigger now and have a go at labeling those. So here we would have the artery coming out through the top of the thorax, like we said, and it would pass behind the clavicle or in a way, under the clavicle. So we call this artery up here the subclavian because it is deep to the clavicle. So this is the subclavian artery. Once it comes onto the scapular region, yes, you guessed it, into the axilla, we call it the axillary artery. Once it passes beyond the scapula and down into the anterior aspect of the arm, we call it the brachial artery. So let's label those bits now. Axillary, because it belongs in the axilla. This one here, brachial. So I put a dotted line across like this. And then a dotted line here like this. So subclavian will stop here. Axillary will stop here. Brachial passes down, goes through the anterior aspect of your elbow and we'll talk about this one in a little bit more detail later, but we call our cubital fossa. So this cubital fossa is just like the popliteal fossa that we have discussed recently, except in your elbow, not in your knee. Once that artery comes through here, it'll become an artery which goes towards your radius and an artery which goes towards your ulna. So there's no real guessing what these ones are going to be called. They're going to be called your radial artery and ulnar artery. Good thing about all these arteries is that they then go into the hand just like we have those other arteries we discussed in the leg, all right? And they have a venous counterpart. So you would find with the subclavian artery all the way back up here, the subclavian vein. With the axillary artery, you would find the axillary vein. With the brachial artery, you will find the brachial vein. And you'll find a radial and an ulnar vein as well. And we'll talk about these in more detail later.